What's going on, guys? Today, we're going to talk about why 75% of America makes less than $35,000 per year. This is what I call the money problem. And we're about to get into why we have certain issues because so many people don't make adequate income. We're going to talk about that and a lot more. Once again, shout out to the Nerd Tribe for leaving your well-constructed comments. I really appreciate you guys. Uh, it's just a joy to wake up every day and to read intelligence, to read people who actually watch the video and put in a, a comment that resonates with the video. It's, it's an amazing thing. So I, once again, I appreciate you guys. All right, so what prompted this video? I was watching a video that was talking about passive, the code of passive income. The girl's name is Tiffany Ferg. And she was talking about it and she gave some basis points to why people were so on the passive income tip because here's something you didn't know. Debt, we have the highest level of personal consumer debt that we've ever had right now. And from a national debt standpoint, we have the highest level of national debt that we've ever had. So people are literally drowning in debt and people are looking for a way out. And once again, uh, Tiffany, I thought, I thought her presentation was good. I thought it was on point. One of the things that I consistently see is people are preaching to you, and this is where we're gonna get back to the money problem, that you can do a lot with a little money. This is a big issue on YouTube. Uh, I was watching a video who was like, Take your income and buy income producing assets. I'm actually got something else that I'm going to do some training on that's going to be way better than that. Um, here's the thing. 75% of America makes less than $35,000 per year. So with the average rent across the nation being a thousand bucks, with the average car payment being $550, just those two things. And you're making 3,500, which is gonna be about 22 to $2,600 per month. So between your rent and your car payment, that sucks up more than half of your money, just those two things. And then we add gas, we add insurance, we add food. So what, I, what the point I'm trying to make is the average person who makes $35,000 a year doesn't have the money to buy income producing assets. There's just, you know, men lie, women lie, numbers don't lie. There's just not enough money to buy income producing assets. Now, I did a video where I was talking about, I spent $400,000 to say black folks were in nothing. Okay. My $400,000 $400, investment, let's just say the car rental business, let's just walk down fantasy lane and say the car rental business was a good business. I don't think the car rental business is a good business, but let's, for, for argument's sake, let's say it was a good business and I invested $400,000 and that got me, my highest month I made was $25,000. So let's, let, let's just park it right there. So I invest $400,000 and I make $25,000 and let's say our expenses were running 5,000, so that left a profit of 20,000 times 12 is 240,000. See, here's the, the big issue, and a lot of people are not used to running the numbers. Once you get used to running the numbers, um, you get a greater understanding of what it takes to get to a certain thing. Because like one of the things I do is like I watch a YouTuber in the financial space and I run the numbers and I'll look at his, his background. And I'll look at his presentation 
and I'll just see things that just don't spell the 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 salt the the narrative that he's trying to sell. Uh, I see no signs of wealth. I see no signs of appreciation. I see a hustle, but I see no real wealth. And once again, you guys have seen me show receipts. You've seen me show car titles. You've seen me show ATM receipts. You've seen the, you know. So one of the things that I am seeing, and this going back to Tiffany Ferg, is people are desperate. People are desperate. And when you become desperate, you're open to anything that can solve the pain. So one of the big issues and the way that this country is set up is that people are not told what the future holds. Like you have a grandfather, you know, what's, what, this is something else. And tell me if this happened in your life. When I was growing up, old people used to tell you what was coming. They would tell you what was coming. That's like, this is gonna happen, this was gonna happen. I don't know if they do that anymore. But we have a lot of people who have no understanding of what is coming. They have no understanding of, you know, cause like I said, 75% of the country, and once again, this isn't like, all right, over, that's only 160 million people out of a population base of 330 million. Half of the country ain't even working. You know, we have kids, we have elderly, we have stay-at-home moms. Half the country ain't working. So when you boil that down to 75% of the 160 million, that's over, that's over 100 million people who really are not making, in my opinion, respectable money. In my opinion, respectable money. And one of the big issues is they don't understand that the money that they're making is not enough to do these things. They understand on a, I'm trying to buy something level. They understand that I cannot afford that because I don't have enough money. They understand that, but they don't understand on an investment level. And I have seen YouTube video after YouTube. I don't really watch TikTok. Telling people that if you put X amount of dollars away for dividend investments, that you can now have this significant revenue stream in the future. Once again, Let's go back to 75% of America, working America, doesn't make $35,000 a year. There's not enough money to buy enough of an asset to produce a significant return. I, I was watching, uh, and this, this, is, this is one of the maddening things about YouTube, because let me go ahead and uh, drift a little bit. Why do I bring you this information? Why do I create these YouTube videos? Once upon a time in my life, I was homeless. I was dirt poor. I don't bring you millionaire game because frankly, unless you're already a millionaire, that advice is totally useless to you or millionaire reacts or all this other stuff. That's just social media hype. The information that I bring to you, I bring to you where you are so you can elevate. Me saying, you know, yeah, I can go out and spend $120,000 for a Porsche. I can do that because I have a business. You can't, and I'm not trying to be dismissive. I'm not trying to talk down to you. I'm trying to talk to you where you are. And this is why I feel that so much of the advice on YouTube is misguided and unhelpful because I know what it's like to be hungry. I know what it's like to be homeless. I know what it's like to want and to want and to want and to want. I know what it's like to walk around without no money in my pocket. I know what that's like. So this is one of the reasons I bring it to you from an earthy organic level and I give you truth because that's what helped me level up. Once again, years and years ago, about 24 years ago, I was just like you. 
I was working a regular job. I had a family. I, I was living paycheck to paycheck. What got me out of that? 100% honesty, not social media hype. And one of the reasons that I bring to you this, because everyone is looking for, and like, I, I felt that Tiffany Ferg, Tiffany Ferg, check out the video, the cult of passive income. She did a really good job of it because she broke down, because there, there's a group of YouTubers who actually tell you the truth. Tiffany um, Ferg, Richard at the Plain Bagel, and once again, men lie, women lie, numbers don't lie. The average person who makes $35,000 a year doesn't have enough money to invest even over the course of 30 years that it's going to be a meaningful investment. Like you invest $200, let's say 300 bucks a month for the next 30 years. You might have 300,000. Better to have it than not to have it. But once again, this is something that's going to happen to you. And let me go ahead and tell you what the future holds for you. I am 55 years of age. And for the most part, I've kept myself in pretty good shape. And even after the heart attack and my doctor and I, we were talking, it's like, because I was working out. That's one of the reasons I made the recovery that I did. But I'm here to tell you, uh, I can feel it. I can feel it. My energy and vitality ain't what it used to be. I can still outwork the young buck because my low grade energy is still higher than a lot of people's overall energy because, you know, I, I, I actually used to work seven days a week, 12, 16 hours a day. I did that for years. Didn't, didn't bust a sweat, did that for years. So the older you get, and I, I'm 55 years old, in five years, I'm gonna be 60. And I already know there's gonna be changes in my body. There's gonna be changes in my energy level. So you are going to get old. Miss Jones, Miss Sally Mae Jones, my neighbor. If you live long enough, you're gonna get old. And what happens to the average person as their energy level and vitality drops, so does their productivity. And when their productivity drops, so does their income. So here's the thing. You only have a 35 year, a 35 or 40 year window to make your life what it is. And investing, because everyone's in preaching investing in the stock markets and buying crypto and staking crypto. Once again, if you have the money, if you have significant assets, liquid assets to invest, then you can, like me, I spent $400,000. I got myself some assets that made $25,000 a month. If it had been a good business, I would still be doing it, but it's not a good business. So what is better than investing? And one of the things that I saw a video this morning, a guy was talking about dividend investing. Dividend income was better than active income because of this one little thing. You don't have to work. People, I didn't understand, because I'm a child of the 60s and the 70s, where cutting grass, working, was honorable. You know, being a child of the 60s and the 70s, it was honorable to work, cutting grass, doing whatever. And now we have a bunch of people who are trying to rent seek. We have a bunch of people who are trying to make money without actually working. And once again, there's the internet charlatans that will give you all of the bubble gum candy advice that is completely and absolutely worthless. Because one of the things that I'm like looking at and shout outs to Tiffany Ferg and Richard at the Plain Bagel because they give you, honestly, Richard has a video, investing will probably never make you rich. The average portfolio size of someone who's 60 years old who's been investing for decades is $200,000. Better to have $200,000 than not to have it, 
But one of the things that I consistently see, one of the things that um, literally blows my mind is the perspective that so many people take. Like, you know, as a person, the limits of your income. You know that they're very well defined. You can afford this car, you can't afford this car. You, your limits are very, very well defined. But for some reason, when you come to the internet, Disneyland, that's that those limitations seem to disappear. You seem to become um, Superman or Superwoman. And one of the things that I consistently see is the average person, 75% of Americans, working America, which is only 160 million people, which 75% is over 100 million people do not make $35,000 a year. They make $35,000 a year or less, or less. And uh, Tiffany did this um, video talking about the cult of passive income. And she broke down some things that I felt she did a really good job on. You should check out the video, the, the Tiffany Ferg, the cult of passive income, because people are desperate. People are desperate right now. We're having the global reset. And right now, I'm gonna tell you something that this is someone I know. Someone I know, son was shot in the face and through the neck, and he's rehabbing. Six months after he was shot, she was robbed at the ATM. She was pistol, whip, pistol whipped, beat down, had her phone and money taken away. And this is once again, because her income dictates where she lives. And she said, it's the neighborhood. There's a bunch of people around here who are broken, who don't want to work, who don't want to work, who don't want to work. And one of the things that we consistently see is the reshaping of America, because once again, I speak to you guys where you are. I used to be just like you. I used to have a job, I used to have a family, I used to live paycheck to paycheck, I had no money. How did I go from being that person to the person I am today? The person that drove to the Porsche dealership and writes a check and drives out with the Porsche. How did I go from that person to this person? And I'm about to tell you, I had to change. I had to change my behaviors. I had to change my habits. Behaviors, habits. Behaviors, habits. I don't have the same behavior. I don't have the same habit. And one of the first behaviors that I changed was my ability to hold on to money. I can hold on to money like you wouldn't believe because I just don't have bad habits. I don't do drugs. I don't really drink a lot. I just don't have habits that consume a lot of cash. I just don't have them. And one of the things that I saw with a lot of my friends who were rich, they had similar habits. So it's about behavior, behavior and habits. And once again, like I said, Tiffany did a really good job because people are so desperate. And I saw this video where this guy was talking about um, passive income and um, was better than active income. And for me, it's very hard to understand why someone doesn't want to work. I can understand working really hard and want to take a vacation. That makes perfect sense. But this whole notion, these like in this world we're growing up. Right now you have people who are getting on social media, YouTube stuff. They will never have a normal job in their whole life. They will never have a normal job. I remember years ago there was this girl, she was a beauty, you know, when the beauty niche was just evolving on YouTube. She used to do beauty tutorials and stuff when she was in high school. 
and she was in the YouTube partner program and she made like 100K. This girl moved out of her parents' house into her own apartment when she was still in high school. How can you parent your child and your child is making more money than you and your wife combined? How can you parent that child? That's very, very difficult. So we're entering into a different space. And once again, once, you know, 75% of America, working America doesn't make 35,000. So, you know, with average rent being a thousand, average car payment by 550, that's half your money right there. Just those two things, half your money. And what's the thing, everyone wants to be a social media influencer. Or a YouTube or a TikTok star. Uh, the girl I'm dating, she does TikTok. She doesn't do it a lot, but she does it. And it is, I am trying to wrap my head around the whole shorts because YouTube's answer to TikTok was shorts and all of these little pithy videos that really don't take a lot of time to consume. And I don't really watch shorts and stuff. I tend to spend my time on long form content because I know if I get on shorts, I'm going to kill my attention span. But one of the things that we should also learn to embrace, because this is gonna be part of the new training, it's gonna be home economics, because you know I've had a lot of people reach out to me about the holding company stuff. And I haven't engaged in these folks, but they don't have their first company. And one of the reasons, and this is what I learned from the training that I need to get to the basics and the foundational stuff before we get into the esoteric. Holding company game is for people who are already millionaires. You know, you can start your first business and have a plan or a vision for your second or third business, but you gotta nail down that first business because like right now, I'm on a break. I still have income coming in because I have multiple businesses. My YouTube business, my YouTube business easily pays for all this. Easily. So, and I got money in the bank. And one of the things that we're going to do with the new training is go through a whole new process, go through a whole new situation because I need to indoctrinate you guys with new behavior and new habits because that's the thing that's going to take you from where you are to where you want to be because I've looked at this stuff like this is why I don't come at you guys with millionaire game and millionaire reacts. That's just mostly bullshit because those type of things don't teach you how to be a millionaire. And that's probably going to be part of the coursework, how to become a millionaire in three to five years, not one year, not a few months. I've literally seen on social media. Uh, claim it, claim it. You claim your million this year. This time next year, I'm gonna be a millionaire. You know how hard that is. Let's go ahead and look at the fact that 75% of working America only makes $35,000 a year. Why is that the case? The average job in America doesn't take that much brain power. The jobs that pay 150. Uh, one of the girls I was dating, she makes like 150. Um, she'd be working on some complex projects. So for you to escape that $35,000 pay wage and to elevate to 100, 150, 200,000, you will have to dramatically enhance your skill sets. That's the issue. If you have an income problem, more than likely, first and foremost, you have a skill set problem. You have a skill set problem. You, you have an issue of managing your expectations. You have an issue of, um, you don't know what you don't know. And look, this is why I'm going to do a lot of foundational training in March. March is going to be foundational training and stuff because we have to fill in these knowledge gaps because everybody wants to start running and quote unquote secure the bag when you should be securing new habits, new behaviors. You should be working on 
increasing your knowledge base. Because one of the reasons that these people are so easily fooled is they, they don't have the knowledge. Like I can watch people, I can mention names of people who are pretending to be millionaires on YouTube who are not millionaires. I have lived in zip code 30327 around real millionaires. I know what real millionaires look like. I'm, I'm about to give you a little how to tell if a person's a millionaire. Because one of the things that people love to tell themselves is the millionaire's next door. The millionaire isn't that different from me. He doesn't drive a fancy car, doesn't live in a big house. He just has more money, but he lives exactly. This is one of the reasons you, these are the lies that poor people tell themselves to make themselves feel better about being poor. Yeah, he's just rich, but he don't live no different than me. He talk like me, he walk like me. He ain't no really that much different. He just got more money in the bank, that's it. No, no. Millionaires, real millionaires drive Ferraris. Real millionaires, like I will tell you, there was a couple in my neighborhood. The guy owned his own company and she drove a blazer and he drove like a regular car, right? But their kids went to private school and I went to their house and their house was immaculately furnished, million dollar house. I think the house was 1.5. So millionaires may not have a fancy car, but more than likely, if they're married and have children, they're gonna have a great house. They're not gonna be living in some bullshit. Once again, you, you see it all the time that, quote, the cheap millionaire, the millionaire has all his money and just doesn't spend it. It's bullshit. People with money spend money. I can t Arthur Blank, owner of the Falcons, was one of my neighbors. You know what he did when he bought that house? He bought the lot to the left of him, the left of him, and to the right of him, and knocked down the houses. So, and he he just made a big estate. Because that that this this is what millionaires. You know this whole notion that millionaires don't spend money, that millionaires are pathological cheap. All right, if you're an asset-based millionaire. I'm going to tell you one of the reasons that you're pathologically cheap. You have to be because you don't have no cash. You have no you, you have no liquidity. This is why people found it so hard to believe that I was able to pay cash for 31 cars, because until I and someone left a comment, I've never seen anyone on YouTube spend four hundred thousand dollars to start a business. Until I did it, you, you've not seen this. And this is, you know, and the, one of the smarter people who actually come in it saying that big companies do what I did all the time. They'll take us X amount of money to develop a business, see how it goes. If it works out, they'll add more money. If it not, they'll shut it down. This is how real millionaires get down. None of this stuff on YouTube, millionaire reacts. I, I'm, I'm here to tell you, the majority of people on YouTube masquerading as millionaires are not millionaires. They might make six figures, which gives them the ability to finance a lifestyle, to look as, like, one of the things, uh, this, this is funny. One dude claims to be a millionaire got bad credit. Uh, if you're a millionaire and you have bad credit, you know what, you can go out and get yourself $100,000 in secured credit cards and fix your credit in a year. Easy, easy. Easy. But once again, people are lying on the YouTubes. So one of the things we're gonna do, and the training is gonna start in March, and we're gonna have home economics. Home economics, it all starts at home. When I was growing up, and we would come across people who had some erratic behavior, and we say you had no home training. Um, home training makes a big difference in um, how you orientate yourself, how you present yourself to the world. Home training is very, very important. Home training is critical. So the first section, the foundational section, is we're gonna be talking about home training, and I'm gonna lay out all the stuff that I just do 
but I don't really talk about. And I'm gonna to explain to you why I do it and how you can implement this in your life. Because one of the things I will tell you, I don't buy nothing of note that's not name brand. One of the things I've learned years ago is when you buy name brand stuff, when it's time to trade up or upgrade because it was name brand, it is easy to sell. I sold a broken camera for $3,000. I sold a broken camera for $3,000. Broke, it's broken. It still works, it still takes videos and pictures and stuff, it's just the door doesn't shut. Because it was name brand. And it's a high demand camera because uh, during COVID they've run out of this camera several times. Uh, I was looking at replacing it because the broken door just irritated me. Um, one of the things that I want you guys to understand about income. Income is very important. Income dictates where you live. Income dictates who you date. Income dictates your children's friends. It makes such a huge difference. And one of the things that I'm gonna do is take you through a process because once again, the people who got the corporate toolbox, the people who got the corporate papers, you're gonna get this new thing. You're not gonna have to rebuy it because we're gonna get into a lot of foundational stuff, a lot of foundational stuff, because one of the reasons that so many people are so easily fooled by these YouTube and TikTok and Instagram charlatans is they don't have a real basis to understand what real wealth is. And I'm here to tell you, I have lived in a neighborhood full of millionaires. They drive Porsches, they live in a million dollar house, they take fa fancy vacations, and of the top of the cream because this is something else that's a big false narrative i have never taken out a loan to start a business i have never used credit to start a business let me say that again i've never taken out a loan to start a business i have never used credit to start a business never ever use credit to start a business ever in my life but you would have people having you believe that this is what really, you know, I saw this post on Quora years ago, talking about these folks who were billionaires and how these billionaires were taking out loans. It was cracking me up because you think Arthur Blank took out a loan to buy the Falcons? He did and he paid cash. He, he, he paid cash. See, these companies, they're not running on loans, they're running on equity infusion and capital you know, people buying their stock which is totally different than a loan it's totally totally different than a loan but we're going to get into a lot of economic education we're going to get into a lot of grooming and bringing you guys along to teach you the things that you don't know because when i looked at that stat that explains everything that explains so much. That explains a lot. That explains um, so many things because people, number one, don't make enough money to significantly invest. They don't make enough money to buy assets. They just simply don't. And the people who do, the top 10%, yeah, this works for the top 10%. But here's something that I've noticed. The people with money don't consume social media in the same manner that the broke people do. Broke people be living on social media like it's a soap opera. I have a, I have friends and I ask them about their social and they're like, I, I know people who are millionaires, they got a Facebook page, we're rarely on Facebook. They're not on Instagram. Once again, you know, I'm gonna tell you why. When you have enough money to live the life that you want, you have no interest in watching other people pretending to live a fake life. You got the money to take this trip and go to Bora Bora or do whatever you need to do. You're not interested in watching some young person pretending to be rich. Because this is the majority of them on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok are pretending to be rich. Pretending. And this creates a level of envy in the level of um, jealousness, you know, there are people who are straight up jealous, just straight up jealous. And one of the things that I want you guys to understand as we go through this, 
whole new building of the the of the, the tribe is because like i said i'm going to give you the economic stuff because you know when you go to college there's a reason that they give you the prerequisites before they get into your core training and we're going to have some prerequisites so you can have a greater understanding of the larger economics because I see stuff on YouTube every day that I know is a fundamental lie because I know better. I know better, but the average person doesn't. The average person is completely unaware of how real money moves, how real money is shaped. And one of the things, because like I said, I don't bring you this millionaire game or millionaire reacts BS because that's not going to help you get to the next level. Me being rich doesn't help you be rich. Doesn't help you at all. It's like I'm over here and you're over there. Now, how do we close the gap? Number one, be honest. Number two, give you the truth about starting a business because I'm about to say something. More than likely, you start your first business, you're gonna fail. And that's not a bad thing. The bad thing is I started five businesses and I, they completely failed. And then I went on this path of pu putting myself in proximity and learn how to get customers, learn how to sell, learn how to prospect. Like, I don't do any cold prospecting. I do inbound marketing. I've not done cold prospecting since business environments where I was on the phone, it's like, do, 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 do. Hey, this is Glendon Cameron. I understand that you're having to move and I have the best furniture for you and I like to set up a time and date so we can talk about this. Is next Wednesday at 1 p.m. good for you? I haven't done that. I never did cold outreach for the storage auction business. It was all inbound internet marketing. Once I discovered the internet, my cold calling days were over. I just didn't do cold outreach. I didn't do it. So we will be talking about, you know, the things that you have to do, marketing and things you have to do for you to go ahead and um, get your business humming. Like, like I said, you know, last few years, I've taken half the year off. I'm at that point because, like I said, I don't feel that I'm going to have a traditional retirement. I feel this is retirement for me. You know, now that I got rid of that pesky car business and I've got my cushy life back, this is retirement for me. To wake up and do exactly what I want to do, to work on the projects that I want to work on. This is retirement. This is my retirement. I'm going to be like Warren Buffett, 90 years old and still working. That's going to be me, 90 years old and still working. So I'm not going to have a rocking, rocking chair on the porch type of retirement. That's just not happening. So, all right, guys, that's all I got for you. Understand that we're going to be cooking with some gas. We're going to be coming up with some different stuff and be on the lookout for it for March. And once again, I, I need to put all that together. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next one.